Okay, everybody, welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to get we're going to step through the creation for an AWS Active Directory. Now, this is an Active Directory that is completely managed by AWS. Uh, it's locked down. You're given administrative access to a particular OU, which you can manage and 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 set up OUs and users and those sort of things. But otherwise, on the whole, there's the majority of Active Directory is delivered as a service to you and managed by AWS. You need to uh, you need to set up and deploy it into two separate availability zones, which means you need a subnet in two availability zones uh, within your VPC or VPCs, depending on how many you have. Um, so oh, well, there we go. We must have a subnet in at least two availability zones. And, and as part of this demonstration, we'll be using the default VPC. So we'll have to add a new subnet. Um, we can deploy Active Directory using the AWS Directory services. We will create a new domain configuration in AppStream. So AppStream then will be able to join these Active Directory, this Active Directory service that we've created. Uh, and then we will modify the fleet to be domain joined. And then we can test as an end user to log in as a domain user to our AppStream stack and fleet. So let's go ahead and do that now. Before we get stuck into the console, if we just have a quick look at our AppStream infrastructure, you'll note that what we've done is we've got our fleets and they're going to be connecting off here to an AWS managed Active Directory deployment. Uh, in order to do that, we need to build it within AWS. So let's step through that and, and build that now. If I scroll back to my AWS management console and I type directory service or just direct and you see it comes up here, host and manage Active Directory. So I'm going to click on that. It's going to take me to the directory services deployment. And you can see there's a few options. We can use Amazon Cloud Directory, Amazon Cognito, your user pools. We could do simple AD, AD connector. However, the one we're interested in is the Microsoft AD. So let's go now and click on setup directory. I'm going to use a standard Microsoft AD deployment. And there's a big difference between pricing. I'm happy just with standard for this demonstration. The Active Directory DNS will be masters of dot cloud. We can use the same for the NetBIOS name. I'm going to give it a admin part. Now this is the admin password to access the Active Directory. And you will note here, it's giving us a list of the VPCs that we can deploy into. So the first VPC, well, this is the VPC. Uh, it's a slash 16. I'm going to select the EU West 1A, which is the first publicly available subnet 10.0.0-24. Sorry, 10. Yes, I'm going to select that. You'll note we don't actually have any other subnet to be able to deploy into, and it needs to be in two different availability zones. So we should go now and create a new subnet in EU West 1B or in any other availability zone. So let's go and click on create new subnet, and let's have a look at that now. So here's our current subnet that's available. Let's go and create a new subnet. We'll call this public subnet 1B. We'll select the only available VPC. We'll change the availability zone to be EUS 1B. You'll note that these, there's only one CIDR that's associated with our VPC, which is 10.0.0.0/16. And here we're going to select 10.0.1.0 slash 24. And we're going to go ahead and click create. So we now have two subnets. I'm going to rename the existing subnet to 1A. So we've got a public subnet 1A. And if you click on it, you will see here the availability zone is EU West 1A. And if we click on the other subnet, you will see it is EU West 1B. So if we go back to our directory services console configuration, we can now change and ref well, we can click the refresh button and change this as we want. So we're going to check 1A as the first subnet and 1B as the secondary available subnet or within our default VPC. So, happy with that. Let's go ahead and click next. Don't forget the password here for your, this is the only user you will be able to log into your 
Active Directory. So you must make sure you remember the user admin and this password. And we'll go ahead and click Next. So you'll note here it's uh, charges begin accruing as soon as your active as soon as your directory is active, unless you're eligible for free tier. Um, you could try the AWS directory service at no additional charge through the directory service 30-day limit free trial. And you'll note there the following types of managed directories are eligible for the 30-day free limited free trial. AWS DS for Microsoft AD, Simple AD, and the AD Connector. So we should be covered by this. I'm simply going to go ahead and create. We're not going to keep this directory service on for long. Uh, they can end up being quite expensive when they're on 24-7 by uh, 30, however many days in the month that you're running it for. So so do be aware that uh, the, 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 char uh, the charges can add up. Uh, let's go ahead and create our Microsoft AD. This could take between, yeah, well, there we go between 20 and 30 minutes for the creation of the AD to, to be set up. It will build two separate Active Directory domain controllers in those two availability zones. Um, it will then set up the domain, it will set up all of the, the policies and the creation of that. Um, it will set up its own administrative rights and OUs. It will then lock down and create us our own OU that we can connect to. And then that is the only section that will have administrative rights within the Active Directory to be able to then deploy uh, users and settings and OUs and those sort of things and then we create our a app stream configuration to point to that Active Directory and that OU so they can get like GPO settings and, and those sort of things so let me pause the video while we wait for this to connect and as soon as this is ready I'll continue okay welcome back uh, you'll finally see that our Active Directory has been created you can see that it's active and here's our directory ID as provided from AWS. If we expand our directory, you can see that it's been deployed into the default VPC. Uh, it's been deployed across two different subnets in two different availability zones. And here are the DNS details or the IP addresses of those Active Directory domain controllers. So we can use those or this information here to provide in our DHCP options set in our VPC in order for our AWS AppStream instances to be able to look up the DNS details uh, for this domain. Um, so that's it at this point. We've set up the directory. It's ready to go. Uh, in the next series of videos, we'll show you how we actually manage the directory and also how we connect to the DNS servers via and creating our DHCP option sets. So join me for that and I'll see you then. Thanks guys. Bye now.